What's up you guys, it's Adana, welcome back to my channel. So as I told you, I promised this is the second video in this week that I'm gonna be doing for you guys. I'm making videos every Sunday and Tuesday, so be sure to come back every Sunday and Tuesday for a new video. But this is gonna be the second part of my video from Sunday. It was a question that was posed by MB. I will post that on the screen, like have it here somewhere for you guys, or maybe here for you all to see. Um, it said, do you feel, the first part said, do you feel like PA school adequately prepared you for your role as a PA or you know for my field um, and so I answered that in my video on Sunday so if you haven't seen that video go and watch that video but the second part um, which I'm gonna be answering today says do you feel a difference between you and other PA graduates from other programs and how would you describe the competency that both clinical and didactic year provide for you now that you're out of school and I thought these are really great questions so we're gonna get into it right now Doing my dance, hey, I'm doing my dance, don't mind me. So much for joining me. So again, the question asked me, how does didactic and clinical gear um, like provide competency for me? I guess now that I have graduated and I'm a practicing PA, um, so I'm going to be answering that. Uh, for me, I think that um, clinical year was amazing. So didactic year, you know, it's a lot of book work, a lot of studying, and it's the foundation. You know, if your foundation is not solid, then it's going to crumble like anything. If you're building, like what there was like a song, right? Let like, the foolish man built his house upon the sand, but the wise man built his house upon the rock. And so depending on if the waves come, uh, the house that's built on the sand is going to crumble and fall away. And so in didactic year, you are building this foundation and hopefully Hopefully you're building this foundation on rock, right? Solid rock, because you want what you're learning in didactic year to pull you through into your clinical year and then ultimately clinical practice. And so for me, um, didactic year was cool in that I learned all the basics. I learned the general information. I feel like I have something here, you guys. Let me just sorry, but I feel like um, I learned the general information and the basics of everything um, with respect to the medicine and treating and diagnosing and symptomology of the various different diseases that I may see out in the field. However, I'm not really sure if uh, anything went beyond that. And I think that, you know, that's kind of really what didactic year is all about. It's really about giving you that foundational base so that when you do go out into the field, and you remember, hey, these symptoms went with this particular disease or this is how I treat this particular disease, you can pull from that, from what you've learned, from the book aspect of things. Now, when it came to clinical year, like that is where like I felt like I shined the most just because, you know, I love being around people and talking to people like in that one-on-one -on -one fashion. Um, if you know me, like I'm very pretty, pretty shy, honestly. Um, so I don't really like doing lots of like big like public speaking events per se, um, although I will do them. So if you want <laughs> to book me for a public speaking event, go on and hit up adonthepa.com or just send me an email at adonthepa at gmail.com. But uh, if, you know, I, I don't necessarily, like that's not like my thing per se, I guess you could say in terms of like the most comfortable setting. Um, I'm really great one-on-one -on -one, and I think I still do pretty well in like the public speaking forum but I'm very reserved. I'm very much uh, out lay back, like in the back of the room kind of person. And so uh, when it comes to clinical year, when you're actually just getting that one-on-one -on -one time with the patient, you're talking to them, you're getting their symptoms and their past medical history, like that's where I think that I thrived. And that's where a lot of um, just like my personal skills that I, you know, kind of honed in on when I was a waitress and, you know, a CNA and um, just like a patient care representative and all that stuff where we're dealing with a lot of customer service, that plays a really big role in how well you are treating your patient and how comfortable you feel with talking to your patient um, and how much your patient opens up to you because, I mean, you know, 
news alert, like patients sometimes lie to you. And so um, building that rapport with them is really important so that they don't lie to you so that they, you, they can get the adequate treatment that they need and you can treat them adequately. Um, so for me, I think clinical year prepared me tremendously well for what I'm doing now as a trauma PA because a lot of what I'm doing is getting that HPI, you know, like, hey, tell me when my EMSs or EMTs or, you know, like come in with a patient. I'm like, what's the story? So I get the story from them and then I have to go and I have to talk to the patient to see what they remember, um, especially if they were in a motor vehicle accident. Did they have loss of consciousness or not? And if not, then they can tell me everything and that determines exactly what I'm doing with respect to their care. I want to make sure that their GCS is right, which is their Glasgow Coma Scale. So I want to make sure that they are kind of mentating well enough to give me accurate information. And so I believe that clinical year prepared me tremendously, like competency wise was great. Um, didactic year definitely gives you that foundation, but um, clinical year was great. In terms of the first part of that second part of the question where it says, um, do you feel a difference between you and other PA graduates from other programs? And this was, this was again, kind of like pertaining to preparation. Um, and so for me, um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't really answer that because I don't know like that many PAs from other PA graduate programs, you know, programs that is like, oh, okay, like we can compare per se. Um, yeah, like from what I think uh, they've gotten, they've gotten some things that we didn't get and I got like some things that they didn't get. Like for me, my school, what they did in our first year of PA school, like from the jump, we were in the clinic seeing patients from like week two or three of PA school, we were in the clinic seeing patients, like getting to do blood pressure readings and those type of things, which was, I think, really imperative in how we, how comfortable we felt once we want, went into clinical year and were actually expected to see these patients and talk to them and get a history from them. So from that standpoint, I think my school prepared me extremely well. Um, and then also, you know, we did a lot of like studying for the pants and the boards. Like we had a whole month of studying um, once we came back for our our last like summative months of PA school right before graduation where we studied. We did various different um, programs. We used different testing. They gave us a lot of various different things to be an advantage to us and be to our benefit. Um, I think somewhere where like we may have lacked and I don't know if this is every program or if this was just my program but for me, I felt like there was a lot of emphasis placed on, hey, like let's keep this 100% pass rate. Um, and although, yes, there, there were teachers there to help us with respect to like learning and grasping information, I think the anxiety that that um, goal places on the students was like a little bit hard, I, I would say. Um, and I get that a lot from other students who've told me that, you know, they didn't pass their boards on the first time either. Uh, a lot of it comes from the anxiety and the fear of XYZ, you know, the fear of not being, you know, the number one in your class or the fear of not being the first one in your family to accomplish this goal or the fear of just, you know, failing at something. And so for me, I think that um, played a role in things and that may have been something that we were lacking and maybe that might be a difference that I've seen um, in necessarily like the program that I went to um, and some other programs where the emphasis was really not about like pass rate, pass rate, but just like you getting the material and passing, I guess you can say. So that is my answer to the question. Please, you guys continue to leave me comments in the comment section below with your questions. Go ahead and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. I really appreciate all of you. Come back on Sunday for another video and be sure to stay tuned because I will be doing the giveaways as I stated um, close to the end of this month. So you just have to come back to know exactly when that is so you can participate in that as well. Thank you again. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.